our team in Mauritius obviously had to had to scramble to get the animals off the island once the oil hit them. They had to wear gas masks because the air was so toxic already. Um, the oil was present, so they, they just had like an hour on the island, take whatever you can and go. Seeing all the hard work being taken away from them, for no good reason really, I mean, devastated for them, devastated for them. Having the ship crash right on our doorstep is very upsetting. It's very difficult to comprehend, but we've just had to move and take action. And this triggered this emergency rescue of the threatened reptiles that exist on the Southeast Islands. Being on these islands for a couple of hours, it gets a little bit unbearable. It burns your eyes, your nose and your mouth. So this is a risk. Decades, decades they've been working on Mauritius. Everything that they've been trying to achieve is uh, at threat. It's a really fragile ecosystem. Some of the rarest species in the world are there. And we knew immediately that we were facing a potential disaster. Much of the oil gushing from the boat has already... We knew that given the expertise that we hold here at Jersey Zoo, we are the world's experts at looking after Mauritian reptiles in captivity. We knew we could help, but that meant making a decision about removing some animals from the southern islands. So of course we worked with the government of Mauritius and our other partners in Mauritius to say, can we do this? And if we're going to do it, we need to do it really, really quickly. We are not trying to save those 60 animals. We are trying to save the species. Those are the building blocks of any ecosystem. And a zoo like Jersey Zoo, of course, we are dedicated to saving species from extinction. So that's our mission statement. And it's the only mission statement we've ever had in our 60 years history. And we believe this is an expertise to bring to this problem. This is a female Beja skink that we've just collected from Il de la Paz. We are going to check its health and condition. And so Ruben is going to measure and weigh the skink and look for any deformities. So we can then compare later on, say in a week's time, whether it's eating enough and whether it's maintaining its health and its body condition. Great. The first big uh, challenge is we can't fly the animals directly here to Jersey. What we have to do is land them at what's called an EU border inspection port. So we had to land them at the nearest uh, one we could, which is Heathrow. And the ports of Jersey have been fantastic at saying, well, okay, what can we do to help? Getting into Heathrow, it's such a busy airport. It's slot constrained and it's dominated by commercial traffic. So it's so busy, almost there's not room for private flights. So it was really only because the pandemic uh, was taking place and normal volumes in Heathrow had been impacted that we actually had a chance. But it is complicated. I'm sure Heathrow will support us and... There's been a huge number of links in the chain to make this happen. At the airport, um, the team at Gamma that are doing the handling, the team at Heathrow, the veterinary services, the endangered species specialists, the uh, kind people that are allowing us to use their plane. It's like the credits of a film and the cast list goes on and on. We need to get shelves, we need to get enclosures for the animals, we need to get heaters, we need to get lights. And uh, I ran into many problems because it turns out that COVID uh, in the last six months really made people not produce much in terms of reptile equipment. I also can't find them anywhere else, no, no. You're the only one who has like 15 at least. So I had to scramble around left, right and center in Europe and UK everywhere and buy a few here, buy a few there, get this ready, get that ready. It was a, a good week of just uh, sitting on the phone in an email and trying to get everything here. 
right now as we sit here, everything's lined up. We believe that paperwork's in place. We believe the jet's ready. We've got a lot of people that are very excited, tinged with a little bit of anxiety. There's many, many moving parts. So until they are safe and sound in this building where we are here now, in their new biosecure home, then I probably won't sleep well. It's about 3.40 in the morning. We've just handed over the two crates where in about five hours time, they'll deliver them through to the aeroplane that's taken them to the UK. Bye bye. Nicole gave us uh, strict instructions to keep the cabin temperature between 20 and 24 Celsius. Once we landed in Jersey, it was a sigh of relief. I just want to see the boxes. And then back to the Zoom, I'm seeing you come out. <laughs> we met Leslie and Matt from Doro on the tarmac, and we knew that the skinks were going to be in good hands. It was great. Very emotional, actually. Okay. Thanks, Lois. Yep, got it. This is actually the first point of a long project. This is years to come. We'll be looking after these animals. Nick. Hello. The anticipation is killing you, he said. So I thought you can uh, witness the Unboxing of Mauritian reptiles in Jersey. Yep. So Boutons will be at the bottom of that crate. Yep, he's well and kicking, running around. Conservation is never just one solution. Conservation is always, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. Hopefully the work that we do this week, next week, next year, is going to get us to the point of ensuring that this oil spill does the least damage it can do. Aren't they cool? Look at that. <gasps> Amazing. And uh, now go and have yeah. a long lie down, Nick, and take some rest. Yeah, I need Please. it. Please. <laughs> I'm so relieved that it's all there, and just watching the crates open was fantastic. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better so far. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Why do we want to care about conservation at all? And the analogy I would give for that was, you, can you imagine flying in a plane and you're traveling and someone is pulling the rivets out of the wings? How long do you want to fly in that plane before it breaks apart? We keep pulling the rivets, all the little species, all the little niches of ecology, all the little functions, we keep pulling them out of the plane that we're flying in we're flying planet Earth. How long is it going to be safe for us if we can't make it safe for all the other little animals and plant species that share our world? So by caring about these little species, we're caring about the wider ecosystem of Mauritius and the Indian Ocean. And we're really caring about how we fly our spaceship, planet Earth. <laughs>